Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. Today's video is all about sunscreen. Honestly, there is no more important step in your skincare routine than the application of a broad spectrum sunscreen at the end. However, finding the right one for you can be a little bit tricky. Over the last couple of years of starting this channel, I've tried just about every sunscreen on the market. Honestly, I put them all through their paces. Whilst I've found some really good holy grails, I've also discovered some wah, 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 total fails. And that's what I wanna call out in today's video. I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the worst sunscreens that I've tried and the reasons why that's the case, but more importantly, offering you some amazing dupes for those products, helping you to find your perfect sunscreen pairing. So sit back, relax, let's talk the worst sunscreens I've tried. Now, before we get into this video, the usual caveats apply, and that's to say a bad sunscreen is better than no sunscreen. However, I think we've got so much choice on the market these days, we really can afford to you know, shop around and find one that really works for our budget, our skin type, and delivers for our skincare routine. Of course, as with everything in skincare, it's a little bit subjective, and what works well for one person might not work for others, and vice versa, which is why I always say it's super important that you sound off in the comments section to let me know your experiences with any products I mentioned in today's video, or any personal fails that you want to call out yourselves. Just promise me that whilst you're down there, you'll also give this video a big thumbs up and a like. It supports me and the channel so, so much, and honestly, I would love you forever. But with all that being said, should we just cut the waffle and delve straight on in? And the first sunscreen fail I want to call out is the Zit Sticker Mega Shade Sunscreen. Now, this hit the market around six months ago, and it was all anybody was talking about in terms of sunscreen. I think they did an awful lot of sponsored content with various influencers, really to get the name and the brand out there to let everybody know that this product existed. I actually was super excited to try it because I thought, okay, I'm super oily and acne prone. This is kind of singing to me. I'm the skin type that it's designed for. So I purchased it with my own money and put it through its paces. No. First of all, it comes with quite a high price point. I always think, you know, with sometimes in skincare, it's worth paying a little extra to get a little extra. I'm not against luxury or higher price skincare. However, when it comes to sunscreen, I don't really like to overpay because I think we should be free to lather as much as we need on our skin, reapply frequently during the day. And I think sometimes when I pay a lot for a sunscreen, I'm a little bit more sparing with it and that kind of defeats the object. This is £35 here in the UK and I use the whole bottle and I'd say I probably got like two weeks worth of use out of it. That's a lot. If I have to buy two a month and spend £70 on sunscreen, that's way more than you need to. Also, this broke me out. Now, I'm not going to read them entirely to fill for that because different things will break different people out. And you do always need to bear that in mind. There was something in here that just didn't agree with my skin. And if I used it repetitively throughout the day, I found by the end of the day, my skin just looked a little bit more congested. And over a period of time, I definitely got more breakouts. The price point, the formulation wasn't all that. No, it was just a firm, firm pass for me. And honestly, I think there's better options for acne prone skin. I'm going to call out this. This is the Nip and Fab Pure one of my holy grails and just take it from me someone that even at age 35 is still a big old zip morning through till evening my adult acne used to really get me down but now thanks to some of the products I've introduced I've been able to get it under control and I just feel really confident about my skin this is one of those products glides on beautifully onto the skin these are really nice veil of hydration behind so if you have super oily skin you don't need to use a moisturizer alongside this and it's just a ding 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 total holy grail and genuinely has never once broke me out. I also want to give a shout out to this. This is the Bliss Block Star Invisible Daily Sunscreen. This is a mineral sunscreen, whereas the Nip and Fab is a chemical. It all comes down to personal preference. Why I love this is, again, doesn't break me out, but when you apply it to the skin, it goes on with the very faintest of tints to kind of counteract the coloration of those mineral components. It glides on, leaves your skin beautifully, beautifully matte. So if you're looking for that product that will keep you matte all day long, this could be it. And as you can see, it just disappears entirely into the skin. There's no sheen. There's no grease. Absolutely stunning. Both of these are streaks ahead of the Zit sticker. Honestly, a fraction of the cost for better delivery. And through my own experience, I can tell you they're very unlikely to break you out. Perfect for that oily, acne-prone skin type. Now let's come on to this product. The Ordinary Mineral UV Filters with Antioxidants. I was desperate to love this product. Honestly, I love so much from The Ordinary. I love the price point, the formulations. I really wanted to love this. And after a couple of uses, no. This is one of the biggest fails I think I've tried with sunscreen. The reason for that is it doesn't sink in. So it just leaves a really thick, like pasty layer on the skin. Not great if like me, you're super oily and you kind of want something really lightweight. Also, my skin really itched with this. Now again, similar to the things that break you out, different things will irritate the skin on different people. So do bear that in mind. My skin 
is generally quite resilient. So to get a reaction and an itching from a product probably means there's quite a few things in here that might not be the best for people with sensitive skin. It's cakey, it's crusty, it doesn't go into the skin, and honestly, oh, just putting it on my hand and feeling how thick and gloopy it is. This is a firm, firm pass. It is super drugstore, so I'm not going to knock them on the price point. You can be lavish with it if you want to be, because again, you're not overpaying. But for me, I just thought this was such a pass, and a real shame, because I love The Ordinary. Now, in terms of dupes, if you want to stick within the Decian family, reach for this, which is the Neod Survival 30. Absolutely stunning. This is everything that the ordinary one isn't. The formulation leaves barely the faintest touch of a product on the skin. It sinks in, it's lightweight, it's really elegant and actually kind of guarantees a good skin day. It almost acts a bit like a primer, smooths everything out and you look in the mirror having applied this and think, yep, yeah, today is a good skin day, which I love. It's packed full of antioxidants like the ordinary one, but it doesn't leave any trace of like that ashiness or that white cast on the skin. Even though I like the ordinary, it is a mineral sunscreen. Now the price point of the these two aren't comparable. Obviously, The Ordinary, I think, comes in at like £6, whereas the Neod Survival is about £20. So obviously, there is that price difference, but honestly, the formulation is so, so good. And this is one of my daily go-to sunscreens that I like to use alongside the Nip and Fab one. They both look beautiful on the skin and honestly, feel like you're wearing nothing at all. If you want to keep it super drugstore and go for something very similar in terms of price point to The Ordinary, reach for this, the Ultraist Face Fluid. Absolutely stunning. This, like The Ordinary, it has that five or six pounds price point, so it doesn't break the bank. You can be as lavish as you want in terms of applying it. But again, there's no white cast, there's no real heavy feeling on the skin. Super lightweight and just a perfect, perfect dupe for people that have reached for The Ordinary sunscreen and just felt a little bit disappointed. Now, speaking of white cast, which we were calling out with The Ordinary one, can we talk the CeraVe sunscreen? Now, I'm not the world's biggest fan of CeraVe as a brand, so I will call that out at the start, but I thought I want to try this because a lot of people were saying, What's it like? Do you have a review? So I popped one on order just to put it through its paces. One use in, and honestly, like my skin is relatively fair. This would go, honestly, go nowhere near this product if you have a deeper, darker, and richer skin tone because it just leaves like a white mask on the skin. Even on someone with my skin tone, it was so noticeable. You couldn't work it in, it was really thick, it was gloopy. I just everything about it was a fail. I cannot believe that CeraVe actually put this through testing, you know, put it onto people's skin and said, What do you think of this product? Got the feedback and thought, Yes, we have a winner here, let's put it to market. Because I just I genuinely don't think this will work for anyone. I've seen other reviews online and just about everyone has that same experience. Either people with like the fairest skin tone say, this is really noticeable, at least a really thick white cast behind. Nobody needs that. You know, sunscreen is super important. We have a right to have one that at least feels good on the skin and makes us feel like we're having a good skin day. Not like we want to hide from the world because it's so, so noticeable. Now I know a lot of people wanted to like this product because it's super affordable, but also because it's packed full of ceramides and panthenol, which calm and soothe the skin. So I've got a really good dupe for you, which is this one. This is a safe recipe, panthenol and ceramide sunscreen. So in here, you've got the ceramides, you've got the panthenol, so you kind of got the skincare alongside the sun protection in one, which I love, but this disappears into the skin so much better. It feels nicer in terms of the finish, and it's just all around, I think, a better, better product. You put this onto the skin, work it in for like 20 seconds, and it disappears. There's no trace of it there, and it leaves behind like a mid dewiness in terms of the finish. It's not deadpan matte, which not everybody will want, but again, it's not super dewy and glowy, which again, a lot of people can find a bit off-putting. It's just a nice middle ground, a product that I think will work for most people. And again, if you're looking for an element of the skincare with the ceramides alongside the sun protection, this is definitely the one that I'd reach for over that CeraVe product. Now, should we come on to this one? This is the Thank You Pharma Sun Protect Water Cream. So I tried this because as a result of the Korean sunscreen scandal, where a lot of Korean brands were actually failing their independent SPF verification, this was one of the ones that actually passed. So I thought, okay, this is the good guy in the Korean sunscreen world. Let's put it on order and try it. Love the formulation. I really, really enjoyed the way it looked on the skin and the level of hydration it got. It was all ticks in the box, but the fragrance. Oh my gosh, it is so over fragrance. I actually don't mind the element of the sensorial, a little bit of a scent to pick me up in my skincare routine. I'm not one of these people that's like anti-fragrance in skincare, but this level of fragrance, oh, it's other. I'm gonna regret this. I'm gonna put a little on the skin to show you how it works. It, it's a beautiful finish and I wanted so much to like it, but the scent never leaves you. It lingers for the best part of like two hours until you're ready to reapply and you think, oh, I've got to go through it all again. And it's sort of like, 
chemical meets washing detergent meets perfume. It's like, it's a hybrid of awfulness. And honestly, it's just too much. I also like to put a little bit of my sunscreen on my lip. You know, the skin on our lip needs that protection the same way the rest of our face does. And unfortunately, I got a little bit of this in my mouth and the taste was enough to put me off. It was so, I could taste it for like days afterwards. Really, really not good. And it's a shame because I love, love, love the way that this worked on the skin. And it does have that independent verification. A really good dupe for it would be this. This is the Biore UV Watery Essence. So this has a lot of the same components as this. A similar finish. I find that it works really nicely on the skin it is fragranced so again if you want a fragrance sunscreen this is a really good one but whilst that fragrance hits you on the initial application it disappears like that so you don't have to endure it long term throughout the day and you don't like dread having to reapply it in terms of how it will apply, very, very similar finish on the skin. It blends in beautifully. It will work for all skin types. And again, that fragrance is just a little bit more pleasant. It's a little bit more summery, a bit uplifting and yet disappears after you've applied it. Such, such a great dupe and definitely one that I'd recommend if you're struggling like me with a Thank You Pharma fragrance. Now my final fail in the sunscreen world is this one, the Purito Daily Go To Sunscreen. This I think is probably the most hotly anticipated of all the sunscreens on planet Earth because people love the original now discontinued Purito sunscreens and thought whatever they come out with as a replacement to those is going to be amazing. I was like first in the queue for this product to try it, used it, I was so underwhelmed. So this is actually a hybrid sunscreen and whilst Purito have a history of being able to formulate mineral based sunscreens really well, no ashiness, no white cast, this is the exact opposite. And I think that's probably because the original mineral sunscreen that Purito came out with didn't have enough mineral UV filters in there to actually give the SPF protection they said. It's kind of part of the problem. So it wasn't that the formulation was so good, it's just it had very few filters in anyway, which is why we didn't notice it on the skin. Obviously, this has been put through its paces and does deliver that SPF of 50 plus. And to achieve that, they've had to up the amount of mineral filters within it, combine it with some chemical filters, and it just leaves a very noticeable layer on the skin. I'd also say, unlike the original Puritos, which were very nice finishes on the skin, they weren't too deadpan matte, but they weren't too dewy and glossy on the skin. This definitely leaves a dewy film, which honestly... I'm not all about. Maybe that's just personal preference because I have super oily skin anyway. And any dewiness in a product just, again, makes me look super greasy. But this is definitely noticeable. You can see that. It gives, like, a sheen to the skin. It's fine. I just think for that, all the better hybrid sunscreens on the market. And nothing really makes me want to gravitate towards this one. I know Purito in the next year are going to come out with a purely chemical one and a purely mineral sunscreen. And honestly, I'll buy them and try them with an open pair of eyes with a fresh perspective. Because it might just be that this sunscreen's missing the mark. As a fantastic dupe in terms of a Korean, fragrance-free, but also hybrid sunscreen, I'd reach for this. This is the Make Prem UV Defense Me Fluid. So, so good. This kind of is one of my favourites and one of the main reasons why I think I might have been quite harsh on that Purito sunscreen because I just expected more based on some of the other formulations that are out there. This Make Prem one is gorgeous. Disappears into the skin much better. I'd say it leaves behind less of a visible gloss to the skin which is definitely preferable for people like me that have very oily skin but it also hydrates you. It's got a better formulation because you've got ceramides in here, you've got allantonin, panthenol to calm and soothe the skin. I think the formulation is better, the finish is better, the price point is very very similar. So for me, I would always reach for the Make Prem. If you can see on the skin, again, it just feels so, so good. Lightweight. There is no dewiness, no gloss to the skin. It's sunk straight in. You compare and contrast that to, I don't know if this is picking up on camera, the Purito one, which is definitely just doesn't really sink in the way that I want it to. I always recommend this. You can see from how filthy this bottle is that this gets used so, so often in my skincare routine. And honestly, I'm really grateful that I found it. I don't feel we need the Purito one in our lives and we've got really nice alternatives like this and I would definitely recommend that one. So, there you have it, guys. A rundown of five sunscreen fails that honestly missed the mark hard this year. But importantly, some other dupes that honestly I just think work better. I Hopefully in this video I've demonstrated that you don't have to pay break the bank prices in order to get a really nice, effective, tried, tested, verified, but elegant feeling sunscreen for your routine. And any of these dupes honestly would work so, so well. So sound up in the comment section below if you've tried them. If you want to add anything additional to the conversation, I'd love to hear from you wherever you are in the world, guys. Stay safe, stay well, wear your sunscreen, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.